energy conservation. So a pendulum is a good example of a system which energy is conserved. So as the pendulum swings back and forth, the energy sloshes back and forth between gravitational potential energy, kinetic energy, and back again. And the total energy, total mechanical energy, the sum of the potential plus kinetic, is a constant value. So here are our goals today. We're going to start talking about energy conservation, and we're going to apply energy conservation in a particular situation. So first we've got to talk about conservative forces. So gravity is a good example. So the energy associated with gravity, the gravitational potential energy, is determined by the object's position relative to something else. And what happens with uh, gravity is everything is reversible. So when you go through a round trip, you sort of have your energy back. Another a good example is the, in the last video we were talking about a ball that went up and down. So you toss the ball up, it leaves your hand with a certain amount of kinetic energy. As it goes up in the air, kinetic energy goes away, but it gets stored as potential energy because the distance between the earth and the ball is increasing. And then as the ball comes back down again, the potential energy decreases, the kinetic energy goes back up again. So, gravity is a conservative force. It gives you the energy back again. So, examples of what we call non-conservative forces are kinetic friction, that tends to reduce kinetic energy, and forces applied by rocket engines, which tend to increase kinetic energy. So, we have this idea called the principle of the conservation of mechanical energy. The total mechanical energy, kinetic energy plus potential energy, that's what mechanical energy is, remains constant as the object moves if the net work done by non-conservative forces is zero. So you can have forces acting but they have to be conservative for mechanical energy to be conserved. Now, then we have this other thing called the law of conservation of energy. And this is more fundamental. You probably heard of this, you know, early on in your school career. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed if it can only be converted from one form to another. So we tend to write an equation that looks like this down. What are all these things? So the U's are the potential energies. UI is the initial potential energy, UF is the final potential energy. The K's are kinetic energies. And WNC is the work done by non-conservative forces. So the sum of the initial potential plus the initial kinetic plus work done by non-conservative forces is the final potential plus the final kinetic. That's how we write it, the law of conservation of energy. And we can apply that in many, many situations. And don't forget that WNC can be negative or positive or zero. Okay, so, and you go back to the definition of the work equation to get the sign. Okay, so we'll do this particular example. So we have three balls. We're going to launch them from the top of a cliff. We're going to launch them with the same initial speed, but they all have different angles. So ball A gets launched horizontally, ball B has initial velocity directed 20 degrees below the horizontal, ball C has initial velocity directed 40 degrees above the horizontal. Eventually they all reach the ground at different times, but that's okay. They all reach the ground below and the ground is totally flat. Which ball hits the ground with the highest speed? A, B, or C? What do you think? So we're going to apply the law of conservation of energy. You know, prior to knowing about energy, we would apply um, projectile motion ideas. We do three different projectile motion analyses to do three different balls. If we change one of the angles, we'd have to do a fourth projectile motion analysis. So just think about doing it that way versus doing it this way. So we're going to write down the law of conservation of energy. And the thing about this equation is you write down the five terms, then you throw away as many as you, as you can right up front. So, we're going to assume there's no work being done by non-conservative forces. The only thing acting on the ball after it leaves your hand and just before impact with the ground is the force of gravity, and that is a conservative force, so we're going to build in gravity via the potential energy terms. What else do we know? Well, we can define R0 for gravitational potential energy to be anywhere we deem to be convenient. So in this case, we'll define the ground level as potential energy equals zero, 
which means they all reach the ground, they all end up at zero potential energy. Okay, so now we've boiled our five term equation down to three terms. Looks a lot simpler. Then we'll start expanding these various terms. Ui is the same for all three balls because they all start out at the same position relative to our ground level. Ki is the same for all three balls because they start off with the same speed, they have the same kinetic energy. So what does that mean? That means Kf has to be the same for all three balls, which means they all hit the ground with the same speed. Okay? So, and you might say, well, what if the masses are different? It doesn't matter. So if you write the equation out with the MGHs and the half mv squareds, you'll see the mass cancels out. So you can have masses, different uh, balls with different masses, and it doesn't matter. So what we get there is 2GH plus VI squared is VF squared, and so they all have the same final speed. And think about this. This means that we can throw the ball at any angle we want, and we'll get the same result. Okay, they take different amounts of time to reach the ground, their velocities are in different directions when they hit the ground, but the final speeds always the same. That's a really amazing result that comes out of energy. Think about how hard it would be to prove that with, with uh, projectile motion. Okay, so that gets you to see the power of uh, this energy approach. Okay, other ways to solve the problem? Well, we saw that all three balls are the same final speed. Yep, yeah, exactly, we saw all that. And with projectile motion, as we said, it would take a lot longer. It would not be nearly as obvious that any launch angle gives the same result. The end.